Hello everyone, today we're taking a look at a pretty popular mini PC and also checking out the budget monitor from Titan Army. It turned out to be a pretty cool mini PC setup on a budget, so hit the like button and let's start. I found this mini PC on Amazon and bought it for $160. For the price it seems to have good specs and it's actually one of the best sellers. It comes in this simple branded box. Inside we have a manual and a mini PC itself. Notice the foam pads, it is nice to see a good packaging. On the left we have a box with accessories that contains an HDMI cable, another HDMI cable which is short in case you want to mount PC behind your monitor. Next we have a 36 watts power adapter with a barrel jack and screws for mounting with with a metal bracket. Pretty good impressions from the packaging, let's check the mini PC. The case is all made of plastic, feels good quality and even has a carbon style finish on top. On the front we have a power button, audio and two USB 3.0 ports. On the side we have a cooling openings and on the back we have a two USB 3.0, Ethernet, two HDMIs and the power port. You can see some more cooling openings as well. On the bottom PC has rubber legs, there is also a message that says which key will get you to buy us. That's nice. I can already see screws, so let's check what we have inside. The top cover has an HDD tray attached to it, which is surprisingly made of metal. So if you need more storage, you can get a low profile HDD or SATA SSD disk and install it in there. Let's move to PC. It has a one stick of DDR4 laptop memory. Unfortunately, there is no extra slot, so if you want to upgrade RAM, you gotta replace this one. Next, we have an M.2 SSD, pretty standard nowadays. They added a thermal pad, which is touching storage tray so the SSD gets some passive cooling. I love to see attention to detail like that. Let's check the CPU as well which is on the other side. We have antennas attached to the case and here's the CPU cooling. We have an active cooling here with a small turbine fan and copper heatsink. This PC doesn't have any dedicated GPU so we only have a CPU with the integrated graphics. That's why it's so compact. I assembled everything back so let's power it up. For the setup I'll be using a new monitor that I got from Titan Army. This monitor has very attractive specs like fast IPS panel and 100Hz refresh rate and for the price, which is $35 with a coupon code, I think it's a great value. In the box we have a stand pieces, a power adapter, looks like it's only 24 watts, which is impressive, then we have HDMI cable, instructions, screws for the stand and some more stand pieces, and finally the monitor itself. It is pretty lightweight, on the back we have a control stick and the ports, which are HDMI 1.4, VGA, audio and power port. So you might say it is old ports, which is true, but for the budget monitor it is pretty standard. And even though we have HDMI 1.4 here, it has enough bandwidth for the specs. So here's all we get from the box. The stand is pretty easy to put together, it has rubber legs on the bottom for stability and allows you to adjust the vertical tilt. What I like is that you also get a bracket, which you can install instead, and the monitor becomes compatible with the aftermarket stands. I connected the mini PC and both both the PC and monitor started working right away. After completing the Windows 11 setup, I went to the display settings and set monitor to 100Hz. I was very interested to see how 100Hz feels, and I can say that the extra smoothness over 60Hz displays is noticeable right away. This monitor also has an IPS panel, which gives you vivid colors and good viewing angles, which is very convenient to have. The monitor also has pretty good software with different color modes, as well as manual tuning. Again, it is really nice to see this level of customization on a budget monitor. Back to our mini PC, let's quickly go through the specs. On the board we have an Intel N100 CPU. It is a 4 core 4 thread CPU with a max boost of 3.4 GHz and 6 MB of L3 cache. It also has integrated Intel Ultra HD graphics which boosts to 750 MHz. So this is not very impressive for gaming tasks but it should be enough for web browsing and office software. Next we have a 16 GB of DDR4 RAM. It works on 3200 MHz out of the box, so don't need to worry about that. Then we have a 500GB of storage. I ran the benchmark and unfortunately that's where we see billing cutting corners. This turned out to be a SATA free SSD, which is still fast enough for an office PC, but I really wanted to see at least Gen 3 here. Anyway, moving on, next we have a solid Wi-Fi module. It works very well with my Wi-Fi. After using this mini PC for a while, I can say it is very capable of being an everyday web browser. PC. 
PC and it can do some office work as well. It can run 4K videos on YouTube and offline easily, so I think it will be a very good candidate for a budget multimedia project. The integrated graphics here supports up to 4K 60Hz. You can add a keyboard and mouse combo of this monitor with PC and you get a nice under $250 setup. Let's now push PC to its limit in games. The integrated graphics that we have here is not really meant for games, so it will be pretty much impossible to play some mainstream games. But let's try. In 3D Mark, our mini PC was basically showing a slideshow, but it scored a 367 points. You can see the CPU score is actually not bad, since that's more important for office tasks. The weak spot is our integrated graphics. During the benchmark, PC was pretty quiet and the CPU temperature was under 70 degrees for most part. Let's run some games now in Valorant on 1080p and low settings. I'm getting FPS in range from 40 to 60. The game is playable, but with this kind of frame rate, I think it's pretty much impossible to get competitive. Moving to Fortnite, I set performance mode with 100% 3D resolution and got not playable around 20 FPS. I changed the 3D resolution to 65% and in that case, I see somewhat playable around 40 FPS. It's not that bad, sometimes FPS gets even to 60, but I don't think I can call it a pleasant game experience. In CS2, I got 14 FPS in the menu, with 1080p low setting, so not really playable. I then tried running some single player games. In Cyberpunk, on low settings 1080p, I got 4 FPS in the benchmark. And in Elden Ring, on low settings 1080p, I got around 10 FPS. Of course, in some games, you can lower the resolution to 720p, but I don't think it's worth it. All those games will not be very pleasant with such performance. Let's stop torturing this PC and run some light games. There are many low demanding games that you can actually run and play comfortably. For example, Hollow Knight in 1080p with low settings runs at a very pleasant over 60 FPS most of the time. So if you'd like to play some games on this mini PC, it's just a matter of finding the right games. I tried running a difficult game about climbing, which recently went viral and it runs at 20 FPS. Another option you have is cloud gaming. Since we have a good Wi-Fi module here, I expect it to work well. I use Nvidia GeForce Now, which has a free subscription. With a free subscription, you need to wait in a queue to join games. For me, it took more than 30 minutes to get in the game. But even then, I was able to play some games like Apex Legends and Fortnite. So if you'd like to play demanding games, cloud gaming is a very reasonable option. The games run at a comfortable FPS and the only drawback is the latency. If you're coming from a gaming PC, you will feel it right away. But after playing for a while, I actually got used to it. But even then, it is pretty hard to get competitive. So I think with cloud gaming, it will be more convenient to play single player games. Cloud gaming is getting more popular and there are actually a lot of services. I'm familiar with Nvidia GeForce Now, since I have a friend who uses his Mac Mini for gaming like that. And he's happy with the performance. Overall, PC showed decent office performance and I think it is pretty impressive for such a single board mini PC. In my opinion, the best use for it will be a web browsing slash office PC or a media center. Let me know what you think about this mini PC in the comments, check out the monitor as well and I'll see you in the next video.